Hello library friends and welcome to today's custom button making tutorial. For this tutorial you're going to need a computer with an internet connection, some basic computer skills, an email address, and access to a printer at home, but if you don't have one at home there is one at the library that you can use. So if you go to Google or any search engine and you look up the button guy He's usually the first one that pops up, and button making easy, that's the one that you want. When you open up his page, you could see that he offers a lot of different things. There's a free online button designer, button making tutorial videos, templates, downloads, resources. If you feel that you want to buy a button maker of your own at some point, um, he offers many different suggestions of what to look for. For today, though, we're just going to focus on the free online button designer. So when you click on that, it takes you to this page. What you need to do, if you want to read everything, you can go ahead. He shows you some ideas of the different types of buttons you can make. You're going to log in or sign up. If you don't have an account, you can make one. It is free. All you need for that is an email address. Um, and you're going to have to invent your name. Currently, I am using the Idea Lab Helper Guy, so that one is off the table. You can't take that one. Um, and let's log in. And of course, the speed of this is going to depend on your internet connection speed. Now, the first thing we want to do is change the size. At the library, the button maker is a 2-inch button maker. Change to round 2-inch, yes. The issue is that if you forget to change the size and you go to change it later, you will lose all of the information on your button and have to start again. So as you can see right now, we have a very busy button with a lot of words and a maple leaf on it. Um, so I'm going to walk you through the process so you can design your own button. At the bottom here, you could see it says text 1, text 2, text 3, text 4. What I suggest to start off is to click on one of those, and you can see which line of text that it controls. So text 2 controls that. Text 3 is a smaller text above it. Text 4 controls along the bottom. Text round top is that one. Text round bottom is the one on the bottom. Icon is the design that's in the middle. So I would like to start out by changing, if you click on the background, selected background, you have a choice of all of these different colors, or you could design your own custom color. For right now, let's start with a nice bright blue button. You also have the option of choosing patterns. If you want a pattern of stars, they have that. They have all these other different clouds, paisleys, everything you can think of. Let's say if you find a pattern of these paisleys, but you don't like the way that it looks, this pattern scaling here zooms in or zooms out so you can make the back of the button whatever you want. So let's try to pick something nice and summery. There we go. Make that nice and big. The other option you have is you click on gradient and you want a solid color. You can see how it changes between the two colors here that you have selected. If we pick a yellow and a red it changes from orange to red. So again, what I would suggest is to play all of these. That's a linear gradient, so from left to right. Is to play around with these and see what we can come up with and whatever you like. So we will pick this right now as our background. So we want text at the top. So let's type something in. Making buttons and then on the bottom, we will write is 
fun with a few exclamation points. Now you could see that the text at the top does not match the text at the bottom. So what we can do is if we go back to the top, we could see over here to the right that the font is Ostrich Sands. So we can, if we click on that little drop-down menu, you can see all the different types of fonts that they offer. Is it unlimited? No, but again, it is a free software. So we will take what we can get. Um, so that is the font Lobster. Let's use Marker for right now. So I'd like that bigger because I want it to pop a little more. So we also have a choice of making it italic. You can add shadow to your letters. You can add an outline to your letters. See, I like that. That distinguishes it a little from the background. Now, if you click on the advanced button underneath that outline, you can change the color of your outline. So maybe a yellow outline. No, I don't like it that much. We'll stick with the white for right now. And you can change the thickness of that outline. So you can see it gets thicker and thinner. So I like it nice and big like that. We can X out of that one. So we can also make it bigger. Now the issue that you could see what happens right now is that as you make it bigger, it goes off the edge. So what we do is we come down here to circle size and we make it smaller again. So we make it a little smaller because we just want it across the top of our button, but it almost disappears, so we make our circle size a little bigger again. You can see, or hopefully you could see, right along this edge there's about an eighth of an inch of a darker color. What that denotes is where the paper is going to be folded around the edge of the button, so you don't want any of your text in that little space. Okay, so our top is marker. So let's go down by clicking on our bottom text and changing that font so it matches to marker. All right, our color black. Let's get an outline on that. We'll click on our advanced and make that thick as well. Let's X out of that. Increase our size so it matches that. And it's a little bigger, and that's okay. That's one of the things that you have to accept with programs like these, is that you can't type in a font size necessarily to get them exactly the same. So a lot of it is just eyeballing it. Now, if we wanted to, we could put extra text in here, in the middle. Um, but what I think I want to play with is an icon. So if we click on our icon tab, we have a maple leaf. Now that doesn't necessarily fit in with our button, so if we go up here to the top bar, we can click on Select Icons, and on the bottom it shows us all the different icons that they have. So feel free to look through them. We have stars, there's a dragon and a unicorn, um, a cupid, and all sorts of geometric patterns and whatnot. So, Ah, look, a thumbs up. So let's put a thumbs up right there. The other thing we can do is we can change the color of that. So since everything else is black, let's make our thumbs up black. It's offering us a shadow, so let's check that out. Okay, let's... Oh, yeah, I can see it. So it makes it a little more distinguished. The other thing we can do with this is that we can increase the size and make it really big. We can rotate it. If you don't like making buttons, now you have a thumbs down. And if you click back on that zero, it brings it back to the center. We can stretch it if we want to fill it a little more. If we want it smaller. Again, if you want to go back to where it was, click on that zero. You can also make it transparent, so if you don't want it as bright as the letters, or if you want it to be able to see your background through it, you can do that as well. The other thing that you can do is move it around. So if you don't want it exactly in the center, you have that option as well. So let's get rid of that for, middle, for a moment. 
The other thing you can see is that with some of these other texts that are in the middle, you can move those around as well. So you could put those exactly... Oh, that one doesn't move. So some of these move, some of these don't. Again, I encourage you to play around with it. Unclick things, click on them, change your icons, do whatever you want, but have fun while doing it. So we have our button. The other option that you have is up here, you could see where it says Upload Image. So if you have an image that you've made on some other software that you wanted to include on your button, if you want to take an image off your computer, let's say you took a picture of your dog and you want to put it on a button, you would upload it right here. And then same thing, you could turn it, stretch it, rotate it, make it as transparent as you want. Now that we like this button, we're going to go here to save and load. Go down to save this button. Save this button? Yes, we want to save that button. It lets us know what it's done being saved. So now we want to actually print it out. So you go up here to where it says all your buttons. And it shows all the different buttons. Now these are buttons that I have designed. And your choices are you can make a print sheet with the selected button or you can make a print sheet with different buttons of the same size. So if all of these are two inch buttons, we have the opportunity to print them all on one sheet so we don't have to waste paper. Let's say we want to create this many times over. So we're going to click on make a print sheet with the selected button. It takes us to another screen and it shows us exactly what it's going to look like. So on this sheet, we will get 12 buttons. At the library, what you would then do is click on the print icon. Once you click on that icon, you get a print menu that pops up. Under destination, you want to make sure you have color indicated for color buttons or black and white for black and white buttons. If for some reason it doesn't pop up initially, sometimes it's hiding under where it says see more. Make sure the number of copies that you're printing is correct, and then hit print. To pick up your sheet of buttons, you need to go to the Internet Lab Desk, which is on the ground floor in the back of the library. If you're not sure where it is or if you need help finding it, please ask anybody who works in the library, or if anybody is in the Idea Lab at that time. If we wanted to do one sheet with many different buttons of the same size. So all of these are two inch buttons. You click and you drag it exactly how many of each button you want on that sheet. And then when you're done with that, you click down here to make the print sheet. So going back to our buttons, I would encourage you to play around because the possibilities truly are endless. Um, upload things, pick different icons, do weird things by moving everything around. Um, the possibilities really are infinite. Um, play around with your font sizes and circle sizes and turn things and move them and make them transparent. Don't forget, always start out by picking your proper button size, which for the library would be a two inch button. So thank you for joining me today. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to give the Idea Lab a call or send us an email or stop in when we are open and we'll be more than happy to answer questions for you.